Hello nurses, this is Kevin with the Nurses Notes and I'm going to talk to you about the basic metabolic panel or Chemistry 7 from the blood book, The Labs You Should Know. It starts with this fishbone, a diagram, like this. It's a methodical way to look at the labs and to see major electrolytes. It's also called the Chemistry 7. So why is it drawn? Well, all patients in the hospitals get blood work on admission to establish some sort of baseline. To understand more about the patient's change in conditions, it might also be drawn. So all patients should have a BMP, and it includes lab values, like sodium, potassium, chloride, CO2, bicarb, BUN, creatinine, and glucose. This is the BMP, or chemistry 7. Call that for the seven items in the panel. So blood is drawn from the patient, and then it's sent to the lab where it gets spun into a centrifuge. This separates the blood into formed elements like red blood cells or white blood cells and platelets and plasma or the fluid portion of the blood. I like to think 55 inch plasma TV then I know where to go from so RBCs will be 45 percent and 1 percent of your WBCs which makes sense since the patient doesn't have a fever so this should be less than the volume of blood. And the RBCs and the WBCs together equals another fishbone called the CBC, which is covered in another lecture. So we're going to go over the BMP. And what we're really measuring is these electrolytes. And these electrolytes are all in the plasma. And this is an interesting concept when you're trying to assess our patient's lab, since anything that's going to affect our fluids will affect the plasma, like vomiting, diarrhea, fluid loss, and even procedures that take fluid out, like an NG tube or an OG tube. In our first column, we have sodium, and that's outside the cell, and sodium loves water, and high is dry, or dehydration. Since they don't have the fluid on board, the sodium is concentrated, and high is dry. And we often can see our assessment showing us that this patient is dehydrated. So sodium's outside the cell, and low is acute. It's acute since we don't know where the fluid is, and this requires further assessment. Since the patient is at risk for coma and seizures, we never bolus sodium, and we only raise one milliequivalent an hour since the brain can't handle these fluid shifts and they could herniate. Remember, sodium follows water, and in a closed environment, that's dangerous. So let's review. High is dry and chronic because we monitor and we treat accordingly. And low is acute since we don't know where the fluid is, and this patient requires a further on assessment. They're both at risk for fluid shifts, and both could go into a coma or have seizures. And we never raise more than one milliequivalent an hour. In our next section, we have potassium, or K, inside the cell, kin to the cell. But remember the plasma? There's very little in the plasma, and that's why it's so important to keep it regulated. And both are acute. Low is, low is acute and usually is the result of fluid loss like GI, diarrhea, diuretics like Lasix. And this is acute since it causes muscle weakness, decreased reflexes, and potentially respiratory arrest. Next, potassium high. This is acute. Why? Well, remember plasma, and it's in the plasma, but it can't get out. And this is usually related to kidneys since the kidneys are responsible for removing potassium and injury, acute or chronic, this isn't happening. Also in burns, as cells get damaged, potassium spills into the plasma causing hyperkalemia. These patients need to be on a monitor and we need to do things to get it out, like give k that pulls the potassium into the intestines or insulin and glucose, which work together in forcing the potassium out of the plasma and into the cell. And lastly, if the kidneys are working, we can give diuretics like Lasix. Okay, let's review. Potassium is a major ion inside the cell, but we're truly measuring what the potassium is in the plasma. High or low, both are acute, and they should be on a monitor. And we're looking for ECG changes. Low is usually because of fluid loss, like in the GI tract, either through NG tubes, diuretics, vomiting, or diarrhea. We need to replace potassium immediately, but we never ever bolus, and we only give 20 milliequivalents an hour. This patient should be assessed for weakness and ultimately potentially respiratory arrest. High is usually related to renal disease, 
and that it can't get out of the body. And these patients need to be assessed for ECG changes, like peak T waves, and ultimately, potentially cardiac arrest. So we need to get this potassium off as quickly as possible. They might need dialysis, or we give meds like kaxalate, glucose, or insulin, or diuretics like Lasix if the kidneys are functioning. Next, we're going to talk about chloride and CO2, or bicarb. And these are our acid-base balances. And we're going to look at these together. First, we have chloride. We assess the patient. Is there a respiratory cause? Are they dehydrated? Or have we given them too much medication that upset the acid balance? Elevated is metabolic acidosis. And low is respiratory acidosis. And I think M before R. And chloride is an acid, so acidosis. But this patient needs assessment. Now, CO2, bicarb, base. Again, we have to assess our patient for the underlying cause, like kidney disease, chronic or acute, respiratory conditions, and low is metabolic acidosis. I think there's no base, so they have to be acidotic, and too much base makes them alkalotic, or metabolic alkalosis. So let's review bicarbon chloride. The acid-base part of the compensation of this diagram, we always look at them together. And either high or low, we look somewhere else. We assess our patients looking at their history. Are they renal patients, respiratory patients? Are they dehydrated? Or we, did we give them medications like Lasix or IV fluids that upset their acid-base balance? Okay, nurses, next column. BUN, blood urea nitrogen, and creatinine. First step, we look at the BUN. And if it's elevated, we look at the creatinine. And if that's normal, then the patient is likely dry. Second step, we look at the BUN. If that is elevated, we again look at the creatinine. If that's also elevated, we circle both of them. Then we think, is this acute or is this chronic? It could be acute, like acute kidney injury. Did we give the patient some nephrotoxic meds, like gentamicin or metformin, and they went down for a CT scan? Or was the patient's blood pressure too, too low for too long? and the mean arterial pressure was less than 60, causing kidney injury? Or are there chronic causes, like is this patient a renal patient? Are they on dialysis? Or do they have chronic renal disease? And are they diabetic? So let's review BUN and creatinine, the renal labs. There are two steps. The first, we look at the BUN. If that's elevated, we look at the creatinine. If that's normal, then the patient is most likely dry. And then the second step, we look at the BUN. If that is high, we look at the creatinine. If that is also elevated, we circle both and we think, is this an acute or chronic condition? Acute injury caused by dehydration, hypotension, or nephrotoxic meds. Or chronic, is a patient a dialysis patient? Or chronic renal disease, a diabetic? And what about low? Well, we really don't worry about low because it's chronic and either overhydrated or liver disease. Acute is high. In the last column, we have glucose. In elevated, high, well, why? They're in a hospital getting coverage and probably on the right diet, so why are they high? This requires assessments of medications, causes, or are they type 1 or type 2? And if it's too high, is this DKA? And that's another lecture. Now low. That's acute. That patient needs to be looked at and assessed and nursing interventions are necessary. First assessment, can they swallow? If yes, 20 grams of carbohydrates or orange juice. But what if they can't swallow? Then IV dextrose or glucose. And this is a doctor's call. So let's review gl glucose. Hi, why? If they're in the hospital and we're trying to control it, why are they high? So we start to explore this patient and what is the driving cause of them being high. Low is acute. Do something now. First, can they swallow? If so, 20 grams of carbohydrates or orange juice if they can't swallow. If they can't, then IV dextrose or glucose and a doctor's call. I am Kevin with the Nurse's Notes. We are mastering nursing in NCLEX one note at a time. Please go to our site where we provide over 300 NCLEX questions free and follow us on Facebook, Pinterest, Twitter, or Instagram. Again, this is Kevin or Nurse Camp. We'll see you next time.